partnership is important in global health. How is your organization contributing to this field? Yes, thank you. So my name is Jeremy Grossis. I'm the uh, representative director and president of Merck Biopharma Japan. Merck is a company that has over 350 years of history. And this strong dedication uh, to the public good is something that is part of our DNA. It's part of our core uh, essence of who we are as a company. There are uh, over 2 billion people in the world today who do not have uh, equal access to, to health. And this is a major issue, and that's why for, for Merck, it is one of our top priorities. Um, and uh, through this, we've designed a, a health equity strategy. It's part of our overall healthcare strategy. And the idea there is that we focus on bringing um, innovation. We focus on bringing uh, patient solutions uh, to those in need around the world, regardless of whether they live in a low, medium, and income uh, low, medium income country or a developed market, um, the the idea is that we provide access uh, to medicines around the world, um, and this is something of obviously that we cannot do alone, and and we need to no, no company can do alone, no no entity can do alone, and so the the partnership uh, partnership with other companies, partnership with government organizations, with nonprofit organizations. This is really something fundamental in, in our approach. Can you tell us how and why Merck got involved in the development of the pediatric presicantal formulation? So I'm Beatrice Greco. I'm uh, the head of access within the Merck Global Health Institute. Um, by background, I'm a uh, neuroscientist. I came to the global health environment um, through my work in the Institute. We actually created that Institute in about two th in 2012. And um, the intent has always been to provide access and to actually develop and provide access to innovations that are going to be um, fostering global health and really very much embedded into the sustainability strategy of Merck. So that's what we've been doing, and that's what we've been doing in particular with the development of this new pediatric treatment to treat preschoolers against schistosomiasis. But not only that, we are also developing innovations um, in the malaria space. So this is about the type of activities that we've been conducting, and for a while I've been the head of R&D, so building the portfolio in that institute. And with the maturity of the portfolio, with, in particular, the successful outcomes of the Pediatric Prasequantil Consortium, it came a time when access has become quite a significant topic. And then I took on this role. And um, I'm learning as I'm doing, but because it's actually an innovative path in this entity space. So that's actually quite an interesting challenge. So this started about um, more than 12 years ago. Um, there was a conference where actually Merck and Astellas were uh, joining together at this conference and um, came about the topic that actually uh, Praziquantel today, it, which is the standard of care to treat uh, schistosomiasis, is actually not suited for the pediatric population. And there was a recognition very early on of the fact that this pediatric population, so the below five to six years old, needed to be treated also that needed to be small, that needed to be having the proper taste and uh, to be uh, um, acceptable also for this population. How would this new treatment option for schistosomiasis for preschool age children impact patients, their families and communities? I think what we have to recognize is that today these preschoolers are not systematically treated. So that means that they are infected and this has two consequences. First of all, not being treated, they continue to contribute to the transmission of schistosomiasis. So we are in an environment where we want to reach elimination as a public health problem of schistosomiasis. And this is very much aligned also with the WHO guidelines that were issued uh, in 2022. The second point is very much that we need to realize that schistosomiasis, beyond a neglected tropical disease, is actually in that age category a child health major challenge. So as soon as children are sick, not only is their health that is impacted, but it's also 
while impacting the caregivers, the parents, the parents in the community, the community within the health system. So it has this series of consequences that we can also, you know, assess in terms of the impact from a financial aspect. And when we have conducted our investment case, what we have seen is that we're talking about several hundreds of millions of dollars that are lost, lost every year due to not treating schistosomiasis in those um, children. So it is not just about an elimination agenda, which is extremely important, but it's a much broader perspective, actually, by not treating those kids. What do you think needs to be in place at country level in order to facilitate and expedite access and scale-up implementation? The spirit of the consortium has always been about sustainability. Sustainability in delivering this product to the patients. And sustainability means here, in that particular case, procurement, because actually the manufacturing and the manufacturers need to have a sustainable way of providing these quantities of products that are going to be needed. So here we do need also leadership of the countries to create the advocacy necessary at domestic level, governmental level, but also external level, to unlock the necessary financing to support them to acquire and to purchase this drug. So it's really, I would think, the critical element that is going to allow us to make this a success story up till the end. Jihad Fund. Fight neglected diseases through partnerships.